What's up, everybody? Welcome to the show. I thank y'all for joining Sports Talk Tuesday. We're going to break it down. I got a few topics to cover this week. We're going to talk about the NFL Week 3. There's a lot of unhappy fans out there. Some people were in disbelief in the beginning of the season. Actually thought their teams would maybe start off undefeated. And, of course, that very rarely happens. And, of course, very few people actually know sports as well as they think they do. Um, so, I'm going to talk about the NFL. Also going to talk about, you know, some of the stories that came out about the NFL, such as Josh Gordon reinstated, and he's going to be with Kansas City. And if he could keep his mind right without no weed, what would that mean for his career as well as Kansas City's team? And does he still have it? Um, also talk about the NBA and Ben Simmons basically wants out of Philly he has his mind made up, says he no longer wants to play with Embiid, and we'll see what happens now that he said he's going to refuse to report to training camp, and what is his trade value? It's probably next to nothing now that they know he doesn't want to report to training camp. And yeah, they have more years left, but we know how this is going to play out. It always plays out. The same way with star players in the NBA that want out. Yeah, they normally have fewer years left in their contract when they want out. But there's nothing worse than a disgruntled superstar. It's toxic to your team. The players are going to be asked every game about it. And it's best to get them out of there. So we'll see what happens with that. As well as some other stories such as Eli Manning giving the double middle finger, the double bird to the Eagles during Monday Night Football, as well as LeBron James saying he had offers to play in the NFL during the NBA lockout. So, we're going to get into it. Before I do, let me get a swig of happiness right quick. Some water. Gin. <laughs> That was a big swig. Anyway, before I get started, let's say what's up to y'all in the in the comments watching. What's up, Bap? How you doing? Brillo, what's good, fam? How you doing? Sweet brown sugar, how you doing, sis? My girl Gina, how you doing, Gina? What's up? Encouraging Warrior, how you doing as well? Detroit basketball, what's good? What's good? John John, what's up, man? I ain't seen you in a while. Good to see you back. Support Gaming, what's up? What's good? Brillo, you said Ben getting back advice or bad? Okay, bad advice. I'm not sure. I think it's going to work. It's bad advice because it's his fault that, they, that, it's, that it's a problem and he wants out. And he's trying to blame other people. But I believe he'll be gone. Larry Jones, what's good? We ain't mean to do y'all like that this week. <laughs> the Browns, they should have had Fields roll out more. Definitely, uh, when I said this, when we hired that coach, Nagy. Who is that Negro on that nag? Nagy. I don't, man bad coach coaching is more important in the nfl than baseball and basketball and we can see his coaching it lacks in every category and it definitely costs the bears it doesn't matter who's the quarterback he sucks so hopefully they get rid of him after this year and we can have a quality coach on that team. Pharaoh, what's good, man? Yachty man, what's good? Peace. All right. You say they owe him $140 million. Go to camp and do it behind the scenes. It's too late. 
It's too late for that. They should have traded him behind the scenes when they had the chance. He's embarrassed. People today are soft. They can't handle criticism. And they fold like a cheap tent. And that's exactly what's happened with Ben Simmons. And Jimmy Butler was right. You can't really win with him. He's soft. They should have got rid of Ben Simmons then and kept Jimmy Butler. They would have been a better team for it. But Ben Simmons was the shiny new toy. Looked like he had all the potential. And so they ended up keeping him and getting rid of Jimmy Butler. And we see that Miami went to the finals with Jimmy Butler. Yeah, it was in the bubble. But they still, Jimmy Butler got heart. He inspires his teammates. Ben Simmons doesn't inspire his teammates. So we'll get into that. And uh, the best fit for Simmons, that's a great question. He has to be damn near the third option on the team. And that would be his best fit. I mean, this trade wouldn't work because Philly wouldn't probably want it. But Draymond Green for Ben Simmons would be a good fit because he plays a similar game as Draymond. And that could be a better fit. You know, Draymond is a great teammate. He would be a good help for MB, but he's not a good he's not as good of a player as Ben Simmons. Plus he's older. So you'd have to throw in some draft picks and another player. But I wouldn't throw in Wiseman and and Wiggins and all of those people for Ben Simmons. No. I mean, the team is worse now. So maybe I throw in Draymond Green in a draft pick or something, maybe two first-round picks. But I'm not throwing in all those other players because now you're missing too much. So we'll see. Um, so before we uh, get – and I don't think about Brooklyn because KD has the ball in his hands – as well as Kyrie and James Harden. So then you throw in another person that only can play with the ball in their hands. That's not a good fit. Besides, what position would he play? Now, they said they wanted to trade Kyrie for Ben Simmons. That would have been a good trade in a way. Kyrie is always injured, though, and is a little older. But he would be a much better fit with Embiid than Ben Simmons. But then Ben Simmons would kind of make their team maybe a little better in a way because James Harden could play the two guard and shoot, play off ball, switch just like how it is with Kyrie. But Kevin Durant vetoed that trade. So, you know, we'll see how it go. Um, so we'll kick it off with the NFL. I'll do a quick recap and I don't plan on being on here that long tonight. So I'm gonna try to keep it moving pretty fast. Maybe we do a little about around the hour show. So with that being said, uh, oh, it didn't load up. Hold up. All right. So, so, going off the scoreboard, the Panthers crushed the Texans. And the Panthers are looking pretty good with Sam Darnold. They 3-0, and and it goes to show how important coaching is because it didn't seem like Sam Darnold was, a, was anything they thought and hoped for when he was with the Jets. Thought he was maybe okay. And now... He's over here throwing 300 yards and got the Panthers 3-0. and Coaching as well as, you know, they got a good supporting cast, but the Jets should have built around Sam Darnold. The Texans, I know they got issues with Deshaun Watson, but they ain't going nowhere without D. Watt. Washington football team is in trouble. 
They got doubled 43-21 by the Bills. They got Josh Allen looking like a star. 358 yards, four touchdowns. And, you know, Washington is in a rebuild right now. They in trouble. And uh, the Bears, we have horrible coaching. Two field goals is all we had. Justin Fields, they had no game plan at all. Even uh, Dan Orlovsky on ESPN said that that was a disservice on what they had with Justin Fields. He basically had no clue uh, what the offense, what they was trying to do. They couldn't get anything going. And uh, <clears throat> like I say, he had nowhere to run or hide and no passing. It was really sad. And uh, I was telling at the beginning of the season, Baker Mayfield is a good quarterback. And it's starting to show. Um, and the Browns got a good team, man. The Browns probably have, on as far as talent goes, one of the most talented teams in the NFL, and now they two and one. We'll see if that talent translate though, because that's the trick with the NFL. You can stack all the talent, just like when the Eagles had uh, all that talent when they had Michael Vick and uh, what's uh, what's his name from Vince Young and and all of those people back in that day, and then it didn't add up. So. Talent doesn't always translate the way it does in the NBA. The Ravens, 2-1. and one, They won by two points. Justin Tucker, NFL record field goal. I mean, this dude damn near kicked the whole length of the field, which, you know, that was one hell of a kick. And so uh, the Ravens, the Lions is in trouble. They look like they rebuilding, as always. And it looks like... Uh, you know, even though it's a new quarterback, same story, same story. So, you know, let me move this over so I can see what's going on with you all's comments. Miss Jocelyn, you know, Big L sitting there licking his wounds. He ain't he don't want to come out of hiding, you know, so we'll see what happens with him. He, he thought the Eagles was going to go undefeated. I'm glad this is all recorded. I said it in the very first episode. Uh, Sports Talk Tuesday for this uh, season that it was no way they was going to beat the Cowboys and San Fran and all these teams he thought they was going to beat. Uh, but, you know, some fans, that's why they're fans. And they don't really understand the game and the delusional. That's my boy, and he's funny. But I try to, I try to tell you, nephew, Listen to the OG. I didn't watch the football for a long time, bro. Um, the Colts, 0-3. Carson Wentz, Garbino. And it looks like he is what he is. And I think that after this year, maybe even in the middle of this year, he may be a backup quarterback if he gets to stay in the NFL. Um, the rest of his career will be a backup quarterback because he doesn't inspire his team. He doesn't translate into wins. And he had just one, you know, good season. And that injury, it seems, may have taken more out of him than people realize. The Bolts, the Chargers looking pretty good. They beat the Chiefs. The Chiefs are starting off one and two. They lose by six points to the Bolts. But the thing is, football is a long season. The Chiefs have a lot of talent. And we'll see in the end, I think they'll at least win 10, 11 games by the time it's all said and done. And the signing of Josh Gordon won't hurt. Either he got it or he don't. If he don't have it, then they'll just cut him and keep playing with what they got. So... I think that's not going to do anything but possibly be a benefit. Famous Jameis. It seems that, uh, you know, Sean Payton has got a way to manage him. He keeps him around 20 or so passes, give or take. And he's doing a great job as a game manager. Um, they 2-1. and one. The Patriots, Mac Jones. 
I mean, he a rookie quarterback. Bill Belichick, he knows what he's doing. I bet you by the second half of the season, Mac Jones will look a lot better than his first half. When you have a rookie quarterback, you're learning on the job. When Tom Brady played, he had a very experienced veteran team that was already built to win. They they had Drew Bledsoe that he was filling in for. This is a rebuilding Patriots team. So we'll see what happens with Mac learning on the job. Nick Saban and Bella Cheat are best friends. Mac Jones, I'm sure, was, you know, recommended by Saban. And they were told, you know, everything he needed to know. And I'm sure he's not going to give up on, on Daddy Mac. So we'll see. Um, Jamari Riddick, my boy in the comments, you're damn right. I said that already earlier. I agree with you 100%. Matt Nagy's a horrible coach in Chicago, and we definitely got to get rid of him. The Falcons squeezed the win over the Giants, which isn't saying much. And the fact that it was just by a field goal shows how bad the Falcons are. They probably won't win uh, too many more games. At most, maybe one or two more games. The Giants are definitely in a rebuild right now. And uh, we'll see what happens uh, with what's going on with the Giants. But I expect them to be in the draft this year because they are depleted with talent for the most part. The Bengals, some people were talking about how Joe Burrow gave the game away to the Bears. But one thing you think about is Joe Burrow had to sling it. And Joe Burrow has been, you know, looking overall pretty good as far as the his usage rate. So as much as they use him, he's and as a young quarterback, he's converting it into wins two to one. Big Ben, this is Big Ben's last year. Big Ben's last year. The Steelers are not going to win anything this year with Ben Roethlisberger um, as the quarterback. we watching him fall apart right in front of our eyes, just like when we saw Peyton Manning fall apart his last season. He couldn't even, you know, throw past his foot. So Ben is beat up too bad in his sick career. This is his last year. I'm pretty positive. Um, the Cardinals has got talent. Kyler Murray is looking good. Um, and, you know, they said that uh, J.J. Watt, you know, looked like it might fit with them. Now the Jags, they're depleted as well. Trevor Lawrence, rookie quarterback learning on the job. We'll see what happens by the second half of the season. Um, they're in the rebuild as well. So beating them wasn't that unexpected. Same here for the Jets, but the Broncos are doing great. And uh, I believe they got, what, Bridgewater? And they're 3-0, and exactly. Teddy Bridgewater, 19 for 25, doing what he does best, which is not make mistakes and move the ball up. He only missed six passes out of 25. He did take two sacks, but they were only for 12 yards. And... Melvin Gordon, not doing too bad. Um, and overall, he's doing what people look down upon now, which is called be a game manager. But 26 to 0 without any turnovers is a great start. They first uh, 3 0 start since 2016 when Peyton Manning was there. So, you know. It is what it is. And uh, blatant truth, Matt Ryan, I think, still got a little gas in the tank. Big Ben is on E. Big Ben is on E. And uh, BAP, yeah, Bridgewater is great. He's very good. He would probably be a star in Minnesota had he not had that injury. Had he not had that injury and it derailed his career the way it did. So we'll see how it turns out with his second half of his career. Um, the Raiders, of course, spanked the Dolphins. I feel bad for my boy Lamont. They're a bunch of fish out of water right now, mammals. 
Uh, they the Raiders look great. Um, what's his name? Uh, the quarterback for the Raiders. Uh, I'm getting old. Derek Carr. Although he threw 43 times, Derek Carr has an arm. He can make some great throws, and it seems that um, you know it's starting to finally pay off with John Gruden wanted to do when he got rid of Khalil Mack and Amari Cooper and all those players to try to rebuild the team. And it seems that this 3-0 and start in Vegas is starting to look good. So uh, the Dolphins, of course, they only won by a field goal in overtime. The Dolphins did fight. Um, it's the Raiders' best start since 2002. That's 20 years, 19 years. So that says a lot. You know, this John Gruden has always been a good offensive-minded coach. Um, so, you know, it looks like it's finally paying off. Um, you know, uh, the Rams, it looks like that they did a great job swapping out to get Matthew Stafford. Matthew Star Stafford does have a hell of an arm. Detroit never properly built a team around him and supported him. And... So he tried to do a lot to make things happen. And it didn't look good because it didn't happen. So maybe they felt Matthew Stafford ain't live up to being the number one pick. But the truth of the matter is Stafford is a good player. And although he was older than golf, I was surprised actually when that trade took place. It looks like the Rams may have got the better of the deal. I thought that was a win-win for both sides. But it looks like Detroit's not going to properly build around golf either. So it doesn't matter who you put in Detroit. Maybe they're not going to make it work. We'll see. Um, they've had players come and they have them go in the, the same story. Um, and the Bucks are now 2-1. and one, um, But, I mean, I still think Brady and the Bucks will be there at the end. I mean, hell, they only won 10 games last year and won the Super Bowl. That's the thing about the NFL. You don't have to go undefeated. All you got to do is be hot when it's time for the playoffs, make the playoffs, of course, and go on that run. I mean, hell, the Giants won Super Bowls with just nine wins. So it is what it is. Um, the Vikings, they got a win over the Seahawks. Who The Seahawks is kind of struggling a little bit. Um, Russell Wilson still is a good player, but... It seems that they need to get him some more help. So, uh, you know, I don't know what's going on with Pete Carroll and them. Um, Carson ran for 12 carries, 80 yards. He was beasting. So they should have kept more with the running game instead of just 12 carries. Um, but you see how they had 26 carries for Matson. And he had 112 yards, so they chewed up a lot of clock. If I look at uh, time of possession, I'm pretty sure they had killed them on time of possession. Um, where is time of possession? And that's one thing people overlook. Look at that. They had the ball for 35 minutes and 53 seconds, roughly 36 minutes to 24 minutes. So they had the ball for 11 minutes more. You know, 11 minutes more and time of possession really matters. A lot of people overlook that stat. But if you don't have the ball, how can you score? Then your defense gets gassed and wore out. And next thing you know, they go on a run. So we'll see what happens with that. And uh, hopefully Seahawks can turn it around. Um, the Packers... Look like Aaron Rodgers is going to say R-E-L-A-X. He's got it. But like I've said before, Aaron Rodgers is the best quarterback I've ever seen. Is he the most accomplished? No. But that doesn't mean he's the most skilled. That doesn't mean he's the most skilled. Aaron Rodgers is very skilled. He got it all. And uh, looks like, you know. They didn't beat the Niners, squeezed one out. He had a game-winning drive, and uh, A.A. Rod ain't no joke, man. I think the Packers is going to be there 
at the end of the year as long as he stays healthy, especially when he in this contract year and he want to make that money. And last but not least, last night, the Eagles got molly whopped, got that ass whooped. They got whooped royally, 41 to 21. Dak Prescott, I tried to tell you all in Discord and in other things, Dak Prescott is not a bad quarterback. I had all kind of people try to gang me up, beat me up in the alley. I said, Dak Prescott, you can win a Super Bowl with Dak. He is a good enough quarterback. We've seen the Eagles win uh, a Super Bowl uh, with what's his name, who ain't worth a damn. What's his name that won the Super Bowl with the Eagles? It's on the Bears now. I can't even remember his name. Nick Foles, he got foliosis. So if you could win a Super Bowl with him, you damn sure could win one with Dak. And if you watched NFL Hard Knocks, the Cowboys ain't look too bad. And Zeke got the ball in his hands. I forgot to put that out there. Which Big L and a couple other people were saying, you know, Zeke ain't what he thought it was cracked up to be. He getting warmed up. He's getting them carries now, and he still got it. Zeke ran for over 100 yards. Well, he had 95 yards on just 17 carries. So, you know, he was doing his job. And then they got Tony Pollard, TP, and I ain't talking about toilet paper, although he did wipe the Eagles' ass. He dry. He had 11 carries for 60 yards. So, you know, they had uh, 150, 55 yards rushing with just two of those backs. And, you know, Jalen was hurt. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Sanders, two carries for 27 yards. See, that's what happens when you chew up the clock and you get out early to a lead is that they don't. They had to throw the ball. They threw it 39 times. Dak only had to throw it 26, and it completed 21. So when you get out to that early lead, now they playing catch up. They get away from their game plan. Don't run the ball, and you pretty much put the the ball in this rookie's hand to try to win it. And he threw two interceptions, had two sacks, and uh, you know it was just a little too much for him. So it's a learning curve. He's, that doesn't mean he's maybe a bum, but he ain't about to do it right now, at least. All right, let me get to uh, my girl, Brielle. What's good? Um, Brielle Knox Rage Recovery Clinic. That's what's up. You say, hey, Jay, sorry I'm not here a lot, but I support you. Much love as always. Well, thank you so much, uh, Brielle. I appreciate your support um as always i'm glad you come through check on check on me over here in the channel and uh you know we'll see what happens uh with the rest of this nfl season um what's your team that you root for uh brielle and uh you know i appreciate you uh you know with the super chat uh to the channel um help keep the lights on definitely um, and you know, of course, I got to get a video out for you. So, uh, I got a video of what happened to the Eagles after they got whooped, uh, by, by the Cowboys. They had to go and, uh, you know, work out. They had to go hit the weights cause, uh, they, they was too soft. So here go, here go a, uh, video of that. Nick Foles, Nick Fails, <laughs> Nick Fails. <laughs> you know, Big L said Dak was bad. Couple other people jumped on the bandwagon. Cobra, Detroit. Detroit was a little up in that a little bit. So, you know, is Dak the best quarterback in the NFL? No. And also, but he's not bad either. And uh, my girl Jocelyn, when we first was doing the pregame for the NFL, and I had uh, the top 10 rated quarterbacks uh, for Madden on here by rating. She was saying Dak deserved to be in the top five. And uh, Big L and a lot of other people was all over her. But Dak is doing good. I'm not sure where I would put him as far as top five or ten. 
but he's playing damn good right now. Okay, here go uh, Jalen Hurts. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Jocelyn ride or die cowboys. That's what I'm talking about. You know that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I ride or die for my bears. I wish we had a better coach. Um Bap said Dak won't win a Super Bowl too. See, I forgot all about you, Dap. Bap. Go ahead and get up, Jocelyn. <laughs> yeah. I definitely would say Dak is a top 10. Um, so I don't know where I would rank him as far as after that. But Dak is not a bad quarterback at all. At all. I mean, you know, if we didn't just get Justin Fields, which actually Dak is more of a proven product than Justin Fields. You always want to go for the proven product. Which is why I was telling uh, Big L if they had a chance to get D. Watt and you had to give up Jalen Hurts, you make that move because you already know what you got with Deshaun Watson. Jalen Hurts may not materialize. You know, Justin Fields, I would love for him to become the next big thing, but he may not. So if I had a chance to get Dak over, you know, uh, what you call it, Fields, I would have to make that move because we already know what Dak can do. So you always take a proven commodity. So um, with that being said, um, let me play this right here. Speaking of the Cowboys, and I'll segue to the NBA right quick. LeBron James said that he definitely considered signing with the Cowboys or Seahawks during the 2011 NBA lockout. I think he full of it with them big long ass legs. He did have been a guy broke up at six foot seven trying to go across the middle. We already saw what happened to Gronkowski's knees, but nevertheless, this is what he said. He said that, um, LeBron's football career was an inevitability when he appeared on Monday Night Football with the Mannings. And uh, he said that, uh, you know, during the game on Monday night that uh, Eli had asked him, did Jerry Jones really offer him a contract during the 2011 NBA lockout? And he confirmed that Jones offered him a deal and added that also... Pete Carroll, the Seahawks head coach, also discussed bringing him on board. So not only did he have a chance to be on the Cowboys, but he could have been on the Seahawks. And keep in mind, for those who don't know, the Cowboys are LeBron James' favorite football team. A lot of people are upset he don't support the Cleveland Browns, but a lot of people don't understand the dynamic of the Ohio area. And him being from Akron, they really don't mess with Cleveland that tough like that. So that's a little different uh, thing that a lot of people don't understand. But nevertheless, you know, he couldn't have played for the Ak Akron Cavaliers. It isn't one. So he played for the Cleveland Cavs. But if he, the, the team he always followed was the Cowboys. And uh, he said he still has the jersey that Jerry Jones and Pete Carroll sent him in 2011. So not only did they talk about it, they sent him a jersey. And uh, it says right here what he said. Yeah, you, I mean, uh, LeBron, your, your, you know, your high school football uh, career is so legendary. They said uh, uh, Jerry Jones actually offered you a contract to come play for the Cowboys, I think in like 2011. During the, the NBA lockout, any, any, did you have any temptations to put the uniform back on and go play for the Cowboys? Oh man, that's That's great. That's true. Uh, Jerry Jones offered me a contract. Also, uh, Pete Carroll did uh, as well in Seattle uh, during our lockout time, and 
it definitely got my, my blood flowing again, got my mind racing again, thinking about the game of football, you know, being out there on Sundays. But, uh, you know, we was able to get a deal done in the NBA, and I was back on the court in no time. But I definitely thought about it. I still got the jersey, too, that uh, Jerry and Pete Carroll sent me from uh, 2011. So, with that being said, what do you all think in the comments about that? Is LeBron just bull crapping, or is he really considering going to the NFL had the NBA lockout taken a long time? And would he been able to take those hits? Because although LeBron is a big dude, NBA standards, um, his legs are still skinny. He is all muscle because he had, what, 6'8", 240? So, I mean, well, he would have played tight end. He would have been fast enough to play tight end and do all those things. Could he block? I don't know. Um, and what about injuries? Look how the injuries are piling up on him in the NBA. Imagine getting hit or getting your knees taken out from up under you or landing on your big-ass bald spot. Who knows what may have happened? That's all I'm saying. Would he have made it? <laughs> uh, Brillo, you said no way. I don't, I don't think he was being serious. I think they was going for uh, going for it, which if I'm Jerry or any other player person, why not? But I don't think he's built for it. And I agree with you, Bap. Um, he's not built for the NFL. He'd be rolling around on that field like a Tyler who just got a whooping, right? <laughs> we already saw what happened to Gronkowski knee. I mean, the knees didn't see eye to eye at all, boy. One was going the opposite way. He got that knee dislocated. That was gruesome injury. So, uh, you know. It is what it is, but uh, you say he was not injury prone in 2011. That's where you're wrong, fam. LeBron has never played a full season in the NBA except for once, and that was with the Lakers. LeBron has missed games his whole career and not just sitting out. He's always had some knick-knack injuries, always. I mean, I can pull it up. Um, but LeBron never played a full season ever, whereas Michael Jordan played full seasons all the time. And, uh, you know, it is what it is, man. A lot of people don't remember these things, and they forget about this stuff. But LeBron, is is that's another thing. Here's LeBron right here. So he started off 79, 80, 79, 80, 78, 75, 81, 76, 79. Here go 2011, what, 62, 76, 77, 69, 76, 74, 82 games right here in 2018. 55, 67, 45. So, you know, LeBron ain't never played a full season and this is the NBA so yeah he may have missed a couple games but there's nobody hitting him either so imagine if he was missing a couple games in the NBA what would have happened if he was in the NFL you know um, he damn sure would have missed you know two three games a year that's <laughs> it or more you know and you can say what you want Mike 82 games he broke his leg 82 games 82 games he missed one game 82 games 82 games 80 78 retired came back for 17 his last three years with the Bulls 82 games 82 games 82 games Retired at age 35, 36, 37. He came back at 38, out of shape, played 60. At 39 years old, 82 games. 82 games at 39, 40, his last year, and he still averaged 20 points a game. So, Mike put in that work, man. <laughs> 
Mike put in that work, you know. And, uh, you know, who knows if LeBron would be a Hall of Famer or not. You know, he could have got injured and his career could have got cut short. So many variables in NFL. Bo Jackson, he not a Hall of Famer. He got injured. You know, it's a lot of things that go into it. Um, so you can't just say he'd be a Hall of Fame. Plus, when he was doing great in college, I mean, in high school, keep in mind that was high school kids he was doing great against. And uh, it wasn't uh, NBA players. So, I mean, NFL professional players. So, you know, there's a difference. Um, and also, let me say one more thing right quick. Where is it at? I'm trying to get to this other thing. Hold on. pull up this other thing about Michael Jordan. Hold on. Alright. So, everybody says that LeBron was a great talent in football, right? Okay. Well, Michael Jordan was a great athlete as well. And it's right here. This article just came out that Michael Jordan could throw a football 60 yards, ran a 4-3, 40-yard dash, but he didn't even want to play in the NFL, you know. And he said he knew every facet of the game. Um, so LeBron wasn't the only great athlete, you know. Um, Mike could do all the same stuff, um, as well as play baseball, although he was old. Had he had started at a younger age, he would have been better. Um, so, you know, um, this is a story that just came out. They said Mike could have been a great wide receiver in the NFL, but he said he was just wanted to play basketball. Um, and he knew every facet of the game. Um, so, and also people be saying LeBron or Kobe or other people passed him up in points. I showed this argument once before that Jordan is first in NBA history in points per game and player efficiency rating. I know Detroit like to say I'm stat king, but this player efficiency rating combines everything. So you have people that have played more games than Jordan, so they may have passed him on certain things. But if you add up the amount of games he played and what he did in those games, his efficiency, field goal percentage, free throw percentage, assist, rebound, all of that put up together, number one in NBA history. So, you know, some people say stats show LeBron is this, that, and the other. Shows LeBron's a great player, but he's not better than Mike. And, you know, I know a lot of y'all young people, you know, just find that hard to believe. But you had to have seen it in your, with your own eyes. And then you would know that there's a difference. You know, they say that Brian, you say he has an overall game. Jordan had an overall game. That's what player efficiency rating shows. That he had the best overall game in NBA history. It shows right here, and I showed this once before on a uh, live, that, uh, you know, even when in the finals, he averaged 33.6 rebounds, 6 assists. You know, never played in a game 7 in the finals. Um, many things Jordan, you know, doesn't get credit for. Um but, you know, player efficiency rating takes everything into account. And, uh, you know, that's how you can see that he had a, a better overall game. Um, but the difference with Mike is he allowed Scotty to have a ball in his hands <clears throat> and and do do some. Whereas LeBron has never allowed another teammate to do that um 
even when he played with D. Wade, they tried that, but he folded like a cheap tent because he didn't know what to do. He didn't know how to play off ball. He couldn't shoot and hit mid range, do all the stuff that Mike do. So anyway, it is what it is. So. Um. I see who the troll is. Got him. <laughs> All right. Anyway, Dwight Howard, a top five center of all time. Woo, that is a good one right there. I would probably say no, but he is a top 10. Because I would say off top, I could name Kareem, Shaq, Wilt, Elijah Wan. That's just four without thinking. Patrick Ewing was better than Dwight Howard. Um, so that's five right there. Um, I don't know about Alonzo Mourning maybe better than Dwight Howard. He's had better years, but did he do it as long as Dwight? I'm not sure. Who else? So that's five right there. Dwight Howard is a Hall of Famer. That's without question. David Robinson. Yeah, did I say David Robinson? What? Wilt, Elijah Wan, Shaq, David Robinson, Patrick Ewing, Elijah Wan. Yeah, Dwight Howard is definitely a Hall of Famer without question. I mean, he won Defensive Player of the Year like three times. I think he, him and only Ben Wallace or something, the only players to ever do that. Um, he did lead Orlando to the finals against Kobe. They lost. He beat LeBron that year in the Eastern Conference. He beat LeBron, and LeBron, you know, was in his, he wasn't in his prime yet, but he wasn't no scrub. So Bill Russell, yeah, Bill Russell was in that too. So I wouldn't say the White is a top five, but I would say he might be in the top ten. Um, maybe if I think about it more, he might fall out the top ten. I wouldn't put him over Mat. I wouldn't put Matumbo over him, but I think he's like a glorified Matumbo. All right, let's switch it up. Um, they built the team better around Dwight. I wouldn't necessarily say it was that much better. Dwight had shooters around him. He played defense, kicked it out to Rashard Lewis, who was on the decline then. You had Turkey Lou. He do Turkey Lou. I called him Turkey Lou. They had Turkey Lou. He was all right. Jamar, Jameer Nelson, he was okay. Dwight Howard made these players better in his prime, though. So, you know. All right. What do y'all think about Floyd Mayweather saying that he going to fight Anderson Silva? Do you think that's a good good chance? That's a good fight? Would you all buy it? What are your thoughts on that? Um, as Big L say, money grab. is definitely a money grab. Um, it says Anderson Silva, who did just knock out uh, Tito Ortiz, um just a week or two ago um, and is now 2-0 and in pro boxing um, he cannot beat Mayweather um, and uh, I think Mayweather has found a way to make a lot of money as a sideshow and, uh, and milk people for money, beating up on people he know that he can beat um, I don't know what do you all think about that would you want to see it? And uh, Mayweather said the Logan Paul fight was legalized bank robbery. You ain't lying. And I think that that's what this would be. I would not pay to see any Floyd Mayweather fight at all, ever again. The last one I paid for was Pacquiao. And uh, that, was, that was bank robbery. Um, so I don't think that uh, I would ever pay to see Floyd fight. 
and now he's at age 44 they say that he may not have too many of these exhibition bouts in him i disagree i think he got a few more in him because there's he fighting people that don't know what the hell they doing as far as boxing now the spider ain't no joke if it was mma he'd beat that brakes off of floyd right now but since floyd is getting these people to step into his arena so to speak uh, I think that, you know, he has a chance because they don't use their feet, elbows, and all that stuff. And so, you know, um, Floyd is just getting easy money. So, uh, yeah, I definitely would not pay for this. You say, no, nah, especially with all these streaming sites. I, I know that's right. Definite money grab. You say you all for Floyd continuing to make money by outboxing chumps <laughs> they make a good chunk of money getting beat by him too they do and i don't have a problem with it but i'm not going to pay to see it i'll watch the replay or you know i just will miss it <laughs> um that logan paul fight was was garbino um logan paul really lost that fight um the last fight that he had and uh, he didn't do nothing to look to me to do nothing to Tyron Woodley. Um, except run around and throw us something every now and then. I mean, he was garbage. So, we'll see what happened. Um, Spider is no joke, yes. But Floyd is smart not to try to fight him in the ring, in the octagon. Because he will get broke up. And uh, I would like to see... Pacquiao and Floyd one last shebang, but truth of the matter is Pacquiao ain't got it no more. He just lost his last couple fights that he had, and uh, Floyd seems to have taken a little bit better care of himself uh, than Pacquiao. And Pacquiao trying to be the president of the Philippines, he ain't he ain't trying to you know fight. I want to be president. They call me the Pac Man. They call me Pac Man. <laughs> So, uh, Jake Paul fight Silver would be a good one because I want to see Jake Paul get knocked out and Logan Paul. I'm tired of them babying them and holding them up after they get caught with something and they slipping. Will you please knock these dudes out? They making a mockery of the sport. They making too much money. And it's just, just ridiculous. So, you know, um... Real quick, Eli Manning, when he was doing, uh, you know, broadcasts with his brother, the Eagles, the bird. Speaking of the bird, they had the bird man junior in there, and they say so Eli the flipped off America. Look, a kid. A double bird. Look, Look at that. that. Can you, I'm sure you can, you can blur yeah. that out, right? It's over there. Yeah. So, I mean, getting thrown bird by a nine-year-old, and, and they're saying things about my mom and Peyton. And you, I can't even tell you what they said about mom. Hey, man. Not what no I so, he gave uh, two, two thumbs up, saying that somebody, a nine-year-old, a nine-year-old gave him a double bird, saying stuff about his mom. And, uh, you know, it said Peyton told him to throw out both middle fingers, which he did. And uh, the producers, of course, they was upset. And uh, they thought that uh, it could be blurred out. But it was live. It couldn't do it. And uh, so, you know, it looked like uh, he got into a little hot water. You can't do nothing these days or say anything. And... Uh, the commercial break they chastised uh eli and uh so he had to apologize and uh <laughs> long uh howie long's son chris long who was with the bears at one point um laughed as they had to apologize and peyton also apologized for egging eli on um so let's see uh what he say all right, all right, sorry. Uh, earlier I gave the, uh, the double bird. I guess that's found upon, so I apologize if I offended anybody. I thought I was just, that's what a nine-year-old did to me. I thought I could 
I could do it back. So, uh, and Chris, I blame you. I blame you for that. It's yeah, my fault too. I, I, I encourage you to do it. My fault. We what apologize. Say? We apologize. In the end, man, we live in a crazy world. Everybody is soft. Very sensitive, I agree. Um, a nine-year-old could do it, but they can't do it. I guess people got upset. And, uh, you know, yeah, he need to learn to censor himself. But in the end, him and Peyton going to still keep their job. Um, if they'd have been black quarterbacks retired or something, it may have been a wrap for their ass. They may have lost that job, but... Um, you know, it is what it is. Uh, let me touch on this Ben Simmons drama real quick once more before we wrap it up. Um, it looks like Ben Simmons is softer than Charmin, and uh, he's trying to say he ain't going to report to camp, and uh, he tried to say it was Embiid or, you know, Doc Rivers or whatever the case, and it all come back to Jimmy Bones. Jimmy Butler was right that he was soft and that they should have traded him and kept Jimmy. And, uh, you know, um, it said on paper, yeah, that was a great team. But one of the things that they didn't like is that Ben Simmons was upset that Doc Rivers uh, would have uh, Jimmy Butler run the offense in key moments. And, uh, of course, he don't know how to play without the ball. And so he can't shoot. So he had nothing to offer, and he was upset. And they ended up getting rid of Jimmy to keep him. Um, so um, they it says right here they could have probably um, went all the way to the Eastern Conference. They were one one win away from that Kawhi bounce to go into the finals, uh, Eastern Conference finals. And, uh, you know, he hit that shot. Um, so, you know, Jimmy never experienced any concerns or chemistry issues with Simmons, but he speak his mind and he said that he felt Simmons wasn't on the same page mentally as someone like himself, basically meaning he's soft. He ain't a warrior. He can't take it. He wasn't ready. And they said that that, you know, part of his you know reason to leave in Philly he was out and it shows that in the end Jimmy was absolutely right and uh it said they got very different leadership styles because Jimmy is vocal but he also does produce while Simmons tries to lead by example but his example is being soft and uh you know it just you know it ain't translating for him and uh, it said that the Sixers wanted to, the players, the players wanted to take a jet to L.A. this week to meet with Ben, but were informed not to come and that he did not want to meet with them. So what is that? Is that fair or foul that he didn't even want to meet with the teammates? Like, man, I don't even want to talk to y'all. As if they did him wrong as if they the ones that can't hit free throws or you know make a dunk i mean and he don't want to talk to them probably because he know that they're gonna check his ass and try to convince him to come back and so he don't want to talk to them because he know he gonna feel stupid and he gonna want to come back and so the best way for him to stick to his guns of wanting to bail is to say Nah, don't come. I don't want to meet with y'all. Which is extremely weak and extremely pathetic. At this point, it's very, very hard to get equal trade value for Ben Simmons. It really is. Um, everybody knows he wants out. Everybody knows he's not coming back. He said he's even willing to sit out the season and lose salary. So at this point, you can't demand too much. Um, so we'll see what happens. Um, if I was uh, Philly, I would take uh, Draymond. And uh, some some draft picks, 
and some other stuff and see what happens. Maybe try to make a trade, trade Dre or or maybe keep him or, you know, maybe trade the picks, try to move up in the draft or something because uh, at the end they have made bad decisions. That Markel Fultz, that trade really comes back to, to bite them because they could have picked uh, what you call it, Jason Tatum, number one. They picked Fultz. Then Fultz just fell apart. They should have kept him. And look at what he's doing in Orlando now. I mean, Markel Fultz is starting to come around and be a good player. They gave up on Fultz. And now they don't have Ben Simmons either. So now they back to the drawing board. I know they was trying to trust the process, but they processed. They blew it. Um, they didn't have Jason Tatum. They don't have Markel Fultz. Um, and now they're not going to have Ben Simmons. They got rid of uh, what you call it too quick. They should have kept him. Nerlens Noel. And they got rid of Dario Saric. They should have kept him. They already had all that they needed. And they got rid of everybody way too soon. Markel Fultz. They got rid of him in Philly. He was at seven points a game. Eight points a game. He can only play 14 games, 19. Then he dropped 72 games at 12 points a game. He only played eight games, 2021, 12.9 points. And, uh, you know, five assists both games, both years. So we'll see what happened 21-22. I think he got injured last year. But I wouldn't be surprised if he putting up 15, 16 points a game and maybe seven assists. Um, so that could have been with the Sixers. They making bad trades. And who did they trade Markel Fultz for? J.J. Reddick, I think. Let me see. Jonathan Simmons. Carson Edwards and Tyrese Maxey. So they just gave him away. Jonathan Simmons, Carson Edwards, and Tyrese Maxey, they might as well have kept him. I mean, they might as well have kept him. I mean, you you traded all this stuff. Why you ain't keep him? It makes no sense. They gave up too soon. And, uh, you know, he don't get paid a lot right now. They should have worked on developing him. So, I know he lost how to, to shoot. He forgot how to shoot and all this other weird stuff. But at the end, I don't know. They definitely, they, they not gonna, they're going to have a hard time keeping him be healthy because he's going to have to work his ass off now um, without being We'll see what happens, but uh, he already damn near had MVP year last year working his ass off. Um, him and Toby, they probably going to play better without Ben. Um, so we'll see what Seth Curry can do um, and other players, but it's going to be hard to get full value back. They keep saying Damian Lillard. I wouldn't give you no damn Damian Lillard if I was Portland for Ben Simmons. Hell no. I don't want him over Dame Dollar. I'm going to keep Dame Dollar. I might give you C.J. McCollum, which C.J. is a good player too, though. C.J. can shoot, put up buckets. He would be a good fit for, uh, you know, Philly. But they probably want more than C.J. But, I mean, that would be, I might give you up C.J. for, for Ben. Because if you get Ben, it still ain't the best fit. Ben and Dame, because Dame got the ball in his hands. He a point guard. His size make it so he can't really play anything other than point. So, you know, it's, it's something else. Yeah, that's why I say I might. CJ is a baller. CJ can shoot. And him and Dame... It's sad that they didn't build around them better because they are the, like, 
probably the best backcourt if it wasn't for the Splash Brothers. They could have been the best backcourt we ever seen since what? Isaiah and Dumars. So, you know, um, it's messed up that they never really built around him. And LaMarcus Aldridge, he bailed right when CJ started the ball. So, I don't know. Um, you say you'll give up CJ. He is small. Him and Dame together are small backcourt. But they have good spacing with the shooting. And uh, he can score, whereas Ben cannot score. And you got to have a little bit of both. I mean, he's a horrible scorer. So, um, I don't know, man. I had to really look at who I could trade for him because there's not many good options. They're going to have to chalk it up to. is not any way they're going to be able to get equal trade value for him. His contract is high. His potential is high. But his talent right now is not as high as his potential. Then everybody know he wants out. So, therefore, why am I going to give you all this stuff when the more he sits around and refuses to play and becomes a problem and disgruntled, then you're going to realize you got a bail. You're going to have to let him go. And so I wouldn't offer too much. And CJ is a big, a big offer. You got a 20-point-per-game scorer right there that can shoot and distribute. Yeah, he's small, but if you put him in Philly, he can run the point. That's right there, a, a upgrade at point guard right there. So, I don't know. I mean, you people say about Ben D so much, but, you know, a good offense is a good defense as well. So, I don't know. It's... There's something to think on with that one. So, I don't know. Uh, Sacktown for De'Aaron Fox. I like De'Aaron Fox. If I was Sacktown, I wouldn't give up De'Aaron for Ben. <laughs> I would want to keep De'Aaron Fox. So, that's the problem is that it's hard. I can see it going one way, but you got to see it going the other way. And I don't see why would I give up. De'Aaron Fox, he already better than Ben Simmons, other than what? Ben got, is bigger than him, can supposedly play a little better D. Well, he got a lot more offense. So, you know, it's a little bit of a trade-off. So, I don't know. We'll have to look into that one. But that's that's a – I like how you're trying to think about it, though. That's what's up. Yeah. Defense wins championships, but you got to offense wins games. And you got to have offense to win the games. Because at the end of the quarters, when the game is over, it's about who put up the most points. You can have all the defense you want, but if you can't score on the other end, we're going to lose. And uh, you can't be sitting there scared for a layup because you might get fouled. Because you can't hit free throws or you worried about what somebody going to say. That's a problem. You already beat. You already beat. <laughs> so, anyway. So, anyway, it was a good show. Like I said, I'm going to try to keep it kind of short today. Uh, I think I might try to do this for a while. Do a good quick hour of hot takes stories real quick and uh you know call it a wrap maybe every now and then i'll do some call-ins but uh when i do the call-ins it start getting real real long-winded so i don't know we'll see maybe every now and then so uh and also when i got people up here the back and forth it does make it long as well so this way get in get out and uh keep it moving so anyway, with that being said, I appreciate y'all for coming through. Thanks for the super chat. Make sure that y'all uh, bang that bell. Ben don't average, you know, 11 rebounds a game. I don't know where you got that from. Um, I can show you right quick before we go that that man does not average 10 rebounds a game. 
And uh, I'm going to drop that, that little bit of knowledge on you right quick before we go. Ben Simmons, he could. I mean, hell, if Russell Westbrook averaged 11 rebounds, then I'm sure Ben could. So here's Ben Simmons right here. Here's his stats. And uh, he was injured his first year. And he's been injured damn near every year since. Anyway, total rebounds per game, 8, 8.8, 7.8, 7.2. 7 he's actually getting worse. He averaged 7 rebounds a game. He averaged 8.2 assists, 7.7, 7, 8, 6.9. He's getting worse. He had better D, 1.7, 1.4, 2.1 steals, 1.6. Three turnovers, and he had 15.8, 16.9, 16.4, 14 points a game. Ben is getting worse. So he averages seven rebounds, 6.9 assists, and 14 points. So, you know... Not a bum, but he's not putting up historic numbers like that. So, anyway. Thank you, Jocelyn. I appreciate you so much. Uh, them Cowboys, I know you riding on Cloud Nine. Cloud Nine. Uh, you a happy cowgirl right now. They didn't, they didn't clip them eagle wings. Y'all got chicken wings tonight. Uh, Big L didn't even show up in the comments. It's all good. Anyway, um... Yeah, the Bears suck. The Bears suck right now. Matt Nagy needs to get fired. Um, I wish we had some type of quarterback whisperer. But anyway, that's not a playoff. That's his career. That wasn't playoff series. That was his career averages. I just showed you. You say, I'm not going off one playoff series. Neither was that. Anyway, go to basketballreference.com. Look it up. Get get your info, and uh, you'll see that uh, Benny ain't what you thought. Anyway, I want to appreciate y'all for coming through. Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to bang that like. Um, you can check out, uh, you know, in the in the uh, description box join the membership uh, in discord we do have a lot of these type conversations going on in discord um, so you know I'll probably check out discord a little later and uh, we have a little another you know debate about some sports so uh, if y'all definitely looking forward to keeping this type of stuff going join, join the discord and uh and uh, the membership, channel membership. And uh, you can go on in the Sports Talk tab. And uh, I'm pretty sure people will be ready to come chop it up with you. Before I go, I'm going to play a video for y'all for rocking with me. And uh, I'm up out of here. So without further ado, here we go. Hello, Miss Lady. Please give us some privacy. You just died last night. Step Brothers right there. Classic. That was my step brother. Alright. Anyway, everybody take it easy. Be safe out there. I wish we could trade for Sean Vigray, man. You ain't lying on that one. Alright, y'all. Be safe. And I'll see y'all on the next video. Deuces.